I didn't know you were there. Morning everyone. Welcome back to the cabin. It's Penny Glen Cabin Life. Uh, the time is 3.20 a.m. Well, 3.25 a.m. actually. Uh, morning to everybody, like I say. Um, this is a new lens that I've got on the camera. I know I did a video yesterday saying I had uh, some new lenses. Well, this is the other lens. So we'll have to see how we go and what we think to it. Um, I, I want to give you a few shout outs. I want to give a shout out to James and Fiona, so hi. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to Ross, Sarah and Marnie Moo. So hi to you. And I'd also like to give one last shout out to my brother Stuart whose birthday it was the other day. So happy birthday Stuart, I know it's a bit late. <laughs> But happy birthday. Um, so I'm shaking my cold off. I think I told you yesterday, I did a video yesterday saying I felt a bit blocked up here. So I don't know if you can tell my voice I'm still a bit blocked, but um, I feel 100% better. So where colds are concerned, it's only lasted a few days, the cold. It knocked me off my feet for the first few days, I must admit, but um, last couple of days I'm feeling a bit better in myself. So I'll just get the kettle on. So how has everybody been? Have you all been all right? I hope so. Well, today I wanted to talk about something a bit different. And what I wanted to talk about was, has the craftsmanship of the past gone forever? Now, I believe it has. I'll tell you why. Well, I'll be honest. You know, a lot of you know I used to be a baker, I used to work for my brother as a baker and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud that I used to work with my brother as a family business, it was nice. Do you know what I mean? Looking back on the memories of that, it was lovely. Obviously he's retired now so he's, he doesn't have the shop and shops anymore so... But uh, it was great while we were there, you know, I was, I used to make the bread, the pies, the pasties, everything like that, pastries, that was my job. I never did cakes, I, I weren't one wanting to learn cakes. So I used to make scones and Eccles cakes and chocolate muffins and and stuff like that. I used to love chocolate muffins. Ooh, they were to die for them chocolate muffins. Uh, but like now, bakeries, baking is totally different. It's all done by machines now. All these big companies, it's mass produced on machines. It, they're all going on conveyor belts and being produced. There's nothing made by hands anymore. You know, I always remember when I was working for my brother that this man came in and he was uh, doing ins selling insurance and um, he said to my brother like, ah Stuart, you know, have you considered insuring your hands? And I I'll always remember that, I'd never heard of all that, that before. And my brother actually insured his hands that if his hands got damaged or anything, then he couldn't work because of his hands being damaged, he would get a payout for it. I'd never heard of such a thing like that, but yeah, but uh, looking back, you know, like, uh, it's not just baking, it's like architecture. We don't have the architecture and buildings like we had before. It's like a lot of these old, like, I tell you one building, one type of building that I feel was good in the past, the old co-ops. The old co-ops used to have old traditional stone buildings, if you remember, the supermarkets. There were none of these... Um, brick ones with these shitty roofs and sorry for swearing those crappy roofs and stuff like that that could be just blown over in a heartbeat it's like when i lived in peniston in south yorkshire uh, we had a, a spa in the village and we also had uh, a co-op 
Well, the co-op, again, was an old traditional building. It was brilliant. It had character, you know. Uh, and then they built a Tesco at the back that virtually just killed the village, really. But that Tesco at the back, they knocked it up in, what, three, four months they knocked it up. You know, it, it were, it were alright, it was a great looking modern building. But it were done on the cheap, all these new buildings are done on the cheap. You know, I remember the houses I've lived in. Uh, some of them, they've had like, just one brick walls dividing the rooms. Or some of them even have just been plasterboards. Two plasterboards either side and a bit of timber in the middle to divide your rooms. Now I know when I was brought up at my mum's house, it used to, each room, the walls dividing were like big thick brick. You know, double brick. But they don't build them like that, eh? like that now. Everything's on the cheap all the time. Let's save a bit of money here. Save a bit of money there, you know? And I'll tell you a little story that's true, right? This is a true story. I remember as a kid we used to go up to Scotland and we used to go to like Glen Shee and Kirk Michael. I don't know if people know where Kirk Michael is. It's a little tiny village in Glen Shee. And we used to go to the Log Cabin Hotel. It was the best thing in the world going to that Log Cabin Hotel. Just give me a second, let me get me a drink, a bit thirsty. So we used to go to the Log Cabin Hotel and we got to know this family just on the outskirts of the village and they had a farm. Right, what I'm going to tell you is absolutely true now, right? And we went one day and my brother was with us and my mum were with us. And when we went to see him, we were saying like, do you get a lot of grants from the EU? And he started laughing at us. And I says, my brother says, why are you laughing? He says, come here. So we went, went out and it were all like moorland and hills and everything where the village is. And we went there and he says, yeah. So he gave me brother binoculars and he's looking up the hill like this. And the farmer, I'm not going to say if it is, the farmer says, how many sheep can you see? Well, and I asked him, going, oh, there's about 30 up there on that hill. He said, what about that hill over there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's another, oh, well, I can see about 40 there. Right, and he had him looking about 10 different directions. And he says, right, go back to the first one. So he went back to the first one. He said, how many do you see? He says, blooming heck, Astro, it says, it's exactly the same. It's not even moved. How did he teach him that? This farmer started laughing. And he says, right, you know all them sheep you've seen? You've seen well over a couple of hundred, haven't you? And Astro says, aye, aye. He says, well, the thing is, he says, we get an EU, a grant off the EU for a supplement for the sheep on the hills. So it says, all right, yeah. He said, uh, the reason they're not moving is the cardboard. So it went, gear. He says, no, no, honestly, some of them are wooden, some of them are cardboard, because what happens is the EU comes out to inspect to see what sheep we've got. But they're lazy. They won't go walking up the hills to look round. They just get the binoculars out and they come to them all. So he says we get more money because they think we've got more sheep. Now that's a true story that. That is absolutely true. So the farmers were scamming. And I'll tell you something else that uh, might be a bit upsetting that's absolutely true though. Since World War II, the most supplemented industry in the UK is farmers. Now I happen to know some farmers who live close to me and I went to speak to them a couple of years ago about certain things that are in a way. And uh, this particular farmer, he says, oh, we, we don't actually have to farm, you know. He says, uh, we don't have to get out of bed in the morning. I said, how do you mean? He says, well, he says, we got that many supplements for everything off the EU and the government. We just farm for a hobby. He said, if I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning, I'm still paid even before I get up. And I went, you're having me on. He says, oh, no, he says, you know, on the main road where all the rhododendrons have been dug out, I says, yeah. This is true, this. I says, yeah. He says, well, if you notice, next year I'm going to replant new ones. I went, right. And he said, in five to ten years, I'm going to cut them out again. I'm going to replant them again. I said, well, why don't you just, like, prune them with your machine? He says, well, the thing is, we get a grant off the EU to cut them out. And then we get a grant to put new ones in. And then after so many years, the cycle starts again. I says, you're having me on. He says, no, it's for wildlife and that. 
has to see your paid to pull your own rhododendrons out and then replant them again every few years. He says, ah, he says, you'd be amazed what you can claim from, for, from EU. He says, there's loads of stuff. And I, this is true as well. So I'm not saying no names or anything, but there's another farmer who lives close to me. And he's got two cows, right? Now, because he's got two cows, and he's got, a, he bought off eBay an old-fashioned milking machine. Do you remember the old buckle? with the pipe and the pump and that. Remember how that's going back to old days? He's got one of them. So what he does is, he just hooks it up to the cow, two cows every day, and he milks them. And what he does is, he sells the milk, which he'll only produce like, what, 10, 15 pints, a, well, not even that, 10 pints a day after his family's had the milk. Sometimes he just gives it away. But because he does that and he has two cows and he has a milking machine, he gets a grant off the EU for being a dairy farmer. Isn't that crazy? But it's true that, and I swear that's a true story. So, for now, when we leave the EU, for the first time ever, all them supplements are gonna stop for farmers. And it's the first time ever farmers are gonna to have to go to work. Now, I know there is some farmers out there that are hard working and they don't get the, the grants, but I assure you in Scotland, the grants are unbelievable what farmers get. There's a lot of farmers in this area are knocking up all these massive buildings and barns and that. And uh, they're all paid by the EU. I would say Scotland gets more money in grants than what England does from the EU, definitely. Definitely. But I'm not slagging off farmers, and I, I do mean that. But sometimes it's not right, all the supplements, when there's other industries that are struggling. And there's people out there that's doing an honest day's work and they're struggling and right now they're afraid of losing their jobs with all this going off. And yet there's farmers that are sitting up, getting up, what, a couple of hours from now? And they're getting out of bed. Ugh. Ah, sorry, I'll go back for another half hour. And I bet you some, because they know they don't have to farm. Because their farming to them is a hobby. So I might lose some, some uh, subscriptions. On my, well, it's not subscriptions, some subscribers on my channels for saying this, but it's true. And the feeling towards people in Britain is exactly the same. They all feel the same way. So I've been ranting on, and I've been, been a bit on a tangent with it, because I get a bit that way. But we'll shoot back over to what I was talking about originally, was the craftsmanship of the past. Is it gone forever? Right, we'll get back on that again now. I'm bad for doing this. I'll say, I'll be in a conversation and there'll be like a trigger word that I have and without realising I'll go on a tangent with things. You'll learn that about me. So for me, like, when I was a kid, we used to go to the old museum in Bolton, Lancashire. And I used to love going there. That didn't sound good, did it? Give me a minute. Hey, sorry about that. Some wood's fallen down in the log store outside, so that's what that bang was. I don't know if you heard it on the on the channel, on the video, I should say. Uh, like I say, yeah, I used to go to, as a kid, we used to go to Bolton um, with my mum and sometimes Stuart to the museum. And uh, it was a beautiful building. I always remember going in and seeing all the fossils and all the dinosaurs bones and everything like that and all the other stuff but what I used to like is if you went downstairs to the cafe then you could go to the animal section uh, in the museum so there was like rabbits in it, snakes in it, lizards in it, fish in it, oh it was great you know because as a kid there were nowhere else to see things like that apart from like TVs and things like that but I think they've shut down that part of the museum now with the animals so it's like farmers, I, I'm not being funny about farmers, I say about farmers because in where well, we used to live in Barnsley there was a big farm, I think it was called Wigfield Farm and they used to have all different animals obviously because it were a farm but I think they got some llamas in and a few all, all other kinds of breeds that were rare and they had to get rid of some of them because like also like they had a, a small animal section where they was going to have snakes and lizards and things like that. But if they did that, they had to have a separate license because then they come under, well, then they become a zoo, which is 
bizarre really but that's what they had to do so a lot of these farms got rid of those type of animals so they didn't have to become a, a zoo which is strange as far as I'm concerned really but it is true that that was Wigfield Farm that I remember that from the past so I used to love going to Wigfield Farm I remember taking uh, our nephew me and Tracy wife Lewis we took him to Wigfield Farm and when he went to see all the animals he started screaming and crying he was terrified it was funny looking back I've actually got a video of that somewhere so right listen I'm gonna get off I've been nattering away again all the time but before we go, I've got a little joke for you. Are you ready? All right. I was in the car the other day. I pulled up outside at road. I got out. And this young kid comes up to me. He said, hey, mister, do you want me to look after your car for a tenner? I says, no, you're all right, mate. You're all right. I've got a Rottweiler in the back. He went, oh, okay then. He said, what's it like at putting fires out? <laughs> Dinky do. Uh, result. Stay safe, stay well. I'll see you tomorrow. Back down at the cabin.